Hey, hi, welcome to Karen and Johnny, in case you couldn't tell, do it raw. And what we're doing today is we went in each other's direct messages and we just... <laughs> that sounds funny already. <laughs> we slipped in each other's DMs. <laughs> <laughs> we went. I'm sorry, that wasn't funny. Anyway, uh, and we found a bunch of questions that we've been asked so much. That over we, and over again. Over and way. over, and we always have to keep repeating ourselves. And not that we don't mind doing it, but... Uh, it does get repetitive after a while. Plus, well, no, this is a gift we want to give you, so we can you can replay it again. If Have it question, forever. If somebody forgets or someone comes up and asks you a question, you can pop it in the YouTube. I <laughs> like videos. <laughs> you can pop it in and tell people. This is Karen and Johnny, and here are their suggestions. Suggestions through their experiences, and you yes. got good perspectives because you got the male perspective. Thirty-five. And she's been doing this for over 40 years. And obviously, I mean, she looks amazing. So we're ready to get rolling. Right. I think we're ready to get rolling. I almost did the most ridiculous thing in the world. Uh, I'm sorry. You always you do. Just, she looks like, oh, but anyway, go ahead. I got a big sweater on. <laughs> sorry. All right, here we go. So question we get a lot is how long have we been vegan? Uh, if you want to go first. Okay, well, what I like to stress is I didn't just all of a sudden become a vegan. I was a vegetarian for several years. Myself and then too. I evolved into being a vegan. I met Dr. Wigmore, who took me over the edge and became raw vegan. And so that was my journey. But I did start the journey because all the women in my family died overweight and very young. My mom at like 46, 47, my grandmother at 50, and my great grandmother at 60. And they all started out tiny and got very large and they had degenerative diseases, cancer, diabetes. And I didn't even know what I was doing, to be honest. And you should be gone. Genetically, oh, you should genetically, be gone. Genetically, if I, you follow the DNA, the whole thing, yes, I should absolutely, if not dead, very sick. Mm -hmm. You know, in the hospital and all the meds. And I don't even know what medication is in my life. But anyway, so, um, and I was constipated all the time. Hey, big warning, folks. If you're not pooping, there's a problem. Because <laughs> what goes in must come out, and if it doesn't, where'd it go? What's I talk it about doing? That all the time. Okay. She's the one that got me into enemas and colonics, but we'll get it. Now, that's that's really one of the questions now. Weird. Well, you <laughs> couldn't wait to get me in that colonic room. <laughs> She's the one that got. Yes, I'm the one that got him into it, folks. But I'm anyway. grateful for it. So, you know, I was constipated, I had terrible skin, and I was really crabby, especially around my period. So, my mother started me. Uh, Strangely enough, she introduced me to carrot juice, and I all of a sudden started going to the bathroom. You know, now I'm not rec recommending you go out and start drinking straight carrot juice. It's a wonderful beginning. It's great to get your kids going on it, but it is a lot of sugar. Anyway, that it's started cheap, my journey. Too. It's a cheap. You know, people are always like, it "How makes can you your start skin juicing?" Beautiful too. Glow. Yeah, uh, it takes one pound of carrots to make eight ounces of juice, and they're pretty cheap. You know? 89 cents for a one pound bag. Yeah. So, what do you pay for a, 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 a soda pop or even a cup of coffee these days? processed and crap. But, but forget it, but High what fructose it, corn syrup. What does a cup of coffee cost? I don't even know. Dollar fifty maybe? Two I think, oh if you no. go to Starbucks I mean I'm you're paying five bucks. Right. And this is carrot juice for eighty nine cents. You know, so anyway, that was my beginning. And because the human body knows what it's supposed to be doing, you give it the chance. I evolved into where I am because I'm also obsessive compulsive and I'm stubborn and I loved having beautiful skin and going to the bathroom. Okay. And your turn. Well, how long has it been? Uh Oh, well, I started the, the whole question journey. was how long, and you got into four <laughs> minutes of 50 years biography. ago. 50 years ago, I started my whole uh, journey 50 years Amazing. ago. Amazing. I'm 71 Amazing. now, or in a few months. Yeah, so. um, yeah I've been, <clears throat> this year it's three years raw, four years vegan, and four and a half vegetarian. I was vegetarian, oh. and then I went raw uh, vegan four months after that, and then my ex and I did a raw challenge, and I stayed raw. and. The rest is history. Why? Why did we go? You first? Well, you kind of explained that already. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, the whole point is I don't know what illness is. I don't know what tiredness is. At 70 years old, <laughs> when I should be retiring, I'm abs uh, actually reopening my business. I'm opening up another restaurant. I've opened up another spa. I mean, I'm just getting started. And, the reason, and the reason I like to be around her is because her energy's like, like she was just about to say, a 20-year-old. It's crazy. Every time I'm here, it's just like, the high vibes, always. And, and my daughter's 46 and I have a 20 year old grandson. And no offense to your daughter, she's got great energy. I think you got yeah. more energy in her. Well, we're-, we're More in, youthful energy. Well, we're in different worlds. I think, I, yeah, yeah. Cause I think that you're more, uh, yeah, I don't know. 
I, I got more a little more uh, a different kind Pizzazz. of maybe hippie, hippie energy. Too. Yeah. 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 My daughter. Yeah, yeah. She, she, Nikki's fabulous. Oh, she is. She's beyond I love her. Nikki. And nobody believes she's 46. No. Oh, maybe I shouldn't even be telling her age. Wow, she is 46. <laughs> she looks great for 46. She looks like she's like 30. Yes. Okay. The question all vegans get asked, where do we get our protein? Yeah. You know, just like... Oh, wait, 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 wait. Real quick. Why I got into it. Same yes. thing. Yep. Right, we skipped over. <laughs> uh, health. Chronic migraines. GI issues. Mild IBS. And he was chubby. Lactose intolerant. <laughs> I was 70 pounds overweight. I had developed adrenal fatigue. I mean, you name it. You had I, migraines all the time, too. Right? Chronic migraines. Yeah, I said that. Oh. Uh, um, <laughs> addiction to pain pill, well not pain pills, but medication, energy drinks, stuff like that. So juicing, started it, vegetarian, and I mean, now like she was saying, you don't get sick no more. I don't even get the allergies or cold or flu that I used to get every year. You were an year. athlete too though, weren't you? I was an athlete too. But, but he's extended his longevity, isn't he? Yeah, your your strength, more strength, endurance, better. I just feel better, and like I said, you don't. I don't even. I don't ever get sick. It's been four years. I haven't get sick. No, and I used to get the cold and flu every year. Mm -hmm. Allergies in the spring and the fall. Nothing now, but yeah. it's because the whole allergy thing is based in digestion. You know, and in all of our kids now, you can't send certain food to school anymore because everybody's got allergies. It's amazing. Everybody, I know. Okay, protein. Where are we getting our protein? And that's what I started to say. The same place the elephant gets his. You know, uh, I'm the 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 uh, oldest animals. The we cut out the middlemen, basically. Yes. Yeah. Right. Because the sun feeds the plant, which we're supposed to eat. But the sun feeds the plant, and then the animal eats the plant, and then you eat the animal. I mean, you're kind of getting a third hand. Plus, we can't break it down. We're not it, we're not car carnivores. Yeah. But uh, you know, people have convinced themselves, and they feel comfortable doing it, and they're terrified to have a meal without it. The thing I love talking about too with that is, I, I heard Doctor or Michael Beckwith talk about when you're eating animals, it, it, it just puts a low vibration in your Absolutely. body from the fear and all the anxiety and the stress that they see before they get slaughtered, and then we take that on, then we're depressed, and I mean, it's exactly. Just a big well, I've mess. actually had clients that that had the disease where they couldn't go out of the apartment or they had all kinds of depression, just going off meat mm -hmm. changed them mentally, stabilized. Yeah. Totally. So, yeah, so we get it with the plants. I always, if you want to get more in depth, I like spirulina. It's the highest form of protein in the world by weight. Hemp is great. Hemp seeds, chia seeds, flax, uh, green juices, uh, plants. It's easily digested, easily absorbed. People don't realize you get everything has protein in it. Even potatoes have 12 grams. Fruit, of protein. everything. But it's yeah. like we're just so programmed. This needs 25 grams of protein. We need this, or we need a burger or steak. And fact is, when you cook meat, you lose like 50 percent of the protein. Absolutely. And not only that, it's responsible for all the, one in two people will have cancer in their lifetime. The meat has so much to do with heart that. disease. I mean, yeah. the two of the top killers: cancer and heart disease. And you cut out meat, and you're uh, mm -hmm. preventing that. Uh, challenges, biggest challenges you've had on your vegan journey? Well, 50 years ago, everybody thought I was insane. You know, nobody invited me to dinner in my family. Uh, and it was extremely difficult, which is why I learned to make the food because there was no place to go and eat. I think we had two health food stores in Chicago at the time. Mm -hmm. um, the Golden Carrot and Sherwin's had a place How here. long ago was that? 45 years, 50 years wow. ago. We had the Golden Carrot and it was on Rush, which they couldn't afford. A health food store couldn't afford to be there now on Rush and Chicago Avenue with wow. the Golden Carrot. And then we had Sherwin's. But, and there was a guy up on, on Devon, too. That we had three. But there was no place to go. There was no food. And so I had to learn to feed myself. And it was, a, it was fun. It was a joy. It was a challenge. But the good thing is, is when you start eating this way, you actually, down the line, eat less, too. Yeah. So challenges. Uh, People still would make remarks about, oh, you can't invite her to eat. Nobody wanted to have me over. Even guys had problems dating me. I had a guy ask me, you mean you can't even drink a Coke? Well, I could if I wanted to, you know. Yeah. But back then, it was so unique. I'm sure. That people thought I was truly a crazy Cause person. Because even now I feel it. there's a disconnect. And there's been so much of a movement now. And back and then? So, back then it was like nothing. there was nothing. And people thought I was absolutely insane. And it was a challenge, I'm sure, opening a restaurant. Yeah, you know, people. <laughs> I opened the first raw food restaurant. The well, meat and the dairy capital of the world, you of always the world. say. And people would walk by my restaurant and stick their fingers down their throat. <laughs> and I had a sign out that said, uh, you know, vegan gourmet raw food. And so I had to change the sign that just said it's fresh food because then people came in. But when I called it raw food, which everybody eats raw, by the way, you just don't call it that when you're eating your salad, you know. Uh, so I had to change the lettering on my window to say just fresh food. 
and uh, then I went from there. But it was, it was, um, but you know, that's the good thing is I never get set back. I'm not bragging. I think maybe I'm just not smart enough. They say God takes care of fools and children and I'm not a child. So it never, I just never paid attention that I was doing something difficult. Yeah. Yeah. Um, challenges for me was probably early on, like family thinking, what the hell am I doing? Yeah. An Italian kid just giving up everything and not eating turkey on Thanksgiving. But I think another challenge is, uh, Socially, it was challenging, you know, going out to eat and um, dating. Dating. Well, I, I don't care because I don't want to date. But we're talking about in the beginning. Oh, you didn't even well, want to no, date in the beginning. Well, my ex and I went vegan together. Oh, that's so, true. Right, right. So. so I was I was dating already, but um, besides that, I really never had no challenges. I mean, because I was juicing, so food wise, I didn't have no challenges. Like, oh, am I eating enough? I felt like I was drinking so much juice that I was mm -hmm. satiated all the time. So I really wasn't like lost with what to eat how to eat i was getting like you know 12 servings of vegetables juicing so and he lives in the burbs where he could get his vegetables very cost effective really too. cheap really cheap yeah so that helped okay, okay. challenges um what what have you found easy on the oh and one more challenge was giving up dairy it, it really was really? i always talk about giving up dairy being italian giving up cheese ranch i love putting it on everything so going raw i always say was easier for me than going vegan hmm interesting That's because very once i eventually kicked the dairy because it was it was tough yeah it's oh. very addictive cheese is one of the most addictive things on the planet yeah i mean it's like sugar and cocaine it's it's like amazing what it does to your system well i was vegetarian for several years and then when i met and and i kind of vegan raw kind of came together at about the same time oh um anyway she must she must have heard, heard us talking about her daughter her. <laughs> she's calling me right now um Anyway, so I guess cheese Cheese might have been a bit of a challenge for me too, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Okay, what's been easy on your journey? What's been easy? What's been the easiest part of your whole journey? You answer that vegan? one first. Um, I will say I'm, I'm very, I'm, I'm very like extreme. I have like a very extreme personality and very passionate. So when I put my mind to doing it, um, it, it, it was kind of easy besides like I said giving up the dairy I, I it, it's been an easy I mean it hasn't been an easy journey but um, just having my mindset and being kind of stuck in my ways and I and, and just being so um, passionate about compulsive. yeah wanting this information reading books looking up you know youtubers and blogs and everything and just staying passionate and on it uh, it's it's been easy because I have that mentality I think what was easy for me is my spiritual growth it was like everything just evolved the way it was supposed to I met the right teachers at the right time that's a great answer just what I needed to hear what I needed to do it just all kind of fell in place that's once I put myself answer. on the journey and I think that's for everybody that's a great answer because that's exactly what happened to me too I yeah. didn't even know what spirituality was <laughs> and all of a sudden you have like this awakening and things just start happening the right everything people just, come in your life and you like you get all this information just like and because like you always say intuitively we all know this stuff and, and, and we I, just wake up to it and i think a good point to make right now is we all get the, we all get these um get these opportunities but you can get so stuck in trying to right or wrong do i do this do I, you will know when it's right just do it that's the thing just do it I think that's one of the greatest attributes I have when I hear something and see something I just do it you know I don't go is it five pounds of this or two points of this or whatever or this is good I just do it yeah. and I kind of use myself as a laboratory for what I need exactly I agree great answer great answer probably my favorite answer so far where do you get your b12 you want to go yeah for me I'm real big on fermented foods uh, you know I, I make a drink called rejuvelac and um, I get B12 from Rejuvelac. I love sauerkraut. I don't take a, a sublingual B12 um, vitamin, but I think people should go in this if they're not gonna get in a lot of uh, fermented foods. And that's what I do. Basis. And that's what I do. I do the B12 supplements. I do the Global Healing Vegan Safe B12. Is it sublingual you yeah. put it on your tongue? That's yeah. really the only ones that I feel work properly. Right. But I've got, I'm eating sauerkraut or something every day. Yeah. So I don't worry about it. Yeah. Uh, oh, by the way, oh, you get it through seaweeds too, and I get seaweed yeah. every day. You get B twelve. Yeah, they say seaweed. they say very little, like trace amounts, but but yeah, I mean, the more the more you do, the yeah. better off. Uh, colonics and enemas. Why do we need to get them done? 
Well, the thing of it is, most people are not pooping enough. Like you know, we were talking if you're about eating earlier. three to five meals a day, you should be making. And three if you to walk five around, and this is no judgment, but if you walk around, I'm a people watcher. People are back. You could tell people are backed up. We're an overweight you, you society. There's an obese <laughs> epidemic. You can yeah. smell them too. It's bad. Most people are carrying anywhere from six to thirty pounds of fecal matter. Even if you're going to the bathroom on a regular basis, you, you're emptying from your um, a descending colon, not the transverse or the ascending part. So you're white. If you got a belly, you're full of shit. Literally. Oh, I was <laughs> we're raw. Oh, okay. Karen and I do it raw. This is uncut, so <laughs> that's where the, we're not that, editing this. That's where that came from. That's I what's going to make our videos fun. Is I'm not making no edits. We're just oh. throwing it up there. So one of the things that I like, you know, if you're driving down the street and somebody cuts so you right. off, you know, or if somebody's angry or gossipy or mean, I always think, boy, they could use a colonic. You know? <laughs> I use that now too because I heard her say that once, and I always say, yeah, they could use a colonic. They could use a colonic. Um, You'd just be surprised if you start to even your vision starts to improve. Everything. I, I agree. I, I used to think she was crazy because when I first started doing my fasting, she's like, you need to you need to do a colonic. I'm like, nothing's going up my butt. I'm sorry. But the <laughs> moment I went to a colon therapist, I loved it. Not for the right reason. I like. I couldn't believe. It. I think I was on like day 18 of my juice fast, and a lot I'm came glad out. You but a lot came out, and I'm like, where did this come from? I've been raw for a year. I'm on a 21 day juice fast, and stuff was coming out. What That's I, I remember say, the stuff. most for me, because what I would do, my own cleansing, and I don't go that deep as like I used to, but I would do juicing for the first 10 days, do a colonic or an enema every day, and then I would go to water and wheatgrass, and on the 17th day of water and wheatgrass, I still got stuff out of my system, and I had been doing all this for 25 years, so you can imagine what most of you are walking around with. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I know, and everybody that I've turned on to get in colonics, they're like, whoa. And I mean, I've heard horror stories with some of the stuff that comes out of there from actually oh, your colon therapist. Right. Well, because I, I have a colonic center here. I mean, people. one of our therapists found a little doll hand that somebody had swallowed as a child. <laughs> you know, came through. And a lot of gum when kids swallow gum. I mean, you have, you walk around with this stuff. And I know it's they crazy. say in the doctor world that it's not possible. They say a lot in the doctor world. Go, go get a colonic with poop TV and you'll get to see. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> okay, what is a staple that we use and like that you use in your diet like that you can't go without? I can't go without chlorophyll every day of my life. I have to have some kind of, and I do spirulina, I do wheatgrass because they all have a slightly different cellular structure. Uh, I do algae, which spirulina is, but I do different forms of algae. Since I've known her, I've known her almost four years now and every time I come here she always has her little wheatgrass and she has her coconut water fresh and I, got, and, and, I'm, and I make green drinks she's yeah. always drinking green so chlorophyll to me that's my protein my calcium my food my fiber my steak it's your life it's my well oh what a thought green food green world why do you think God put all this here you know it's nice to look at and it's nice to have the part but we're supposed to be ingesting it totally. that's why God put so many we're supposed to be living in 38 percent oxygen levels which is tons of greens right and so we need those greens so I'm addicted to having green foods and every day yeah and that's why I love this place because oxygen therapy hyperbaric chamber ozone therapy it's yeah. it's awesome I mean when you combine that with diet next level 71 next level yeah, because that's the other thing. People say to me all the time, well, you're a raw foodist, but you know all the raw foodists don't look as healthy as you. Yes, eating raw is very important, but I do other things too. I pray and meditate. I do my oxygen therapies. I do, I do a lot more than just eat because I'm living in a bizarre world where it's not, it's a very hostile world for humans that we live in. Yeah, so I stressed. have to find a way to make up for Managing all living that. in a city. Yeah. Um, what were you, did you answer? A sta oh, a staple in my diets, I mean, yes. everybody probably knows already, is juicing. Since I got into this lifestyle, making juice every day, a green juice, like I said, 9 to 12 servings of vegetables, switching the greens up so you're getting all types of different minerals, and it's a staple. I feel that, uh, like I said, it satisfies you longer, and it's just a great way to cheat getting those vegetables in for those that can't sit around like a gorilla and just <laughs> eat greens all day. Um, Johnny Juice is his name. Wonder where that came from. Yes. yes. <laughs> Juicing. How do you deal with social gatherings? You know what I do? Uh, I'm real big on uh, eating before I go or making, getting my juices and getting the food in that I know my body wants. So, you know, you're not tempted. When you, you know, when you go out to dinner and they put that butter and bread on the table and you're starving to death, you're going to 
dabble in it you're going to eat it you know and what i tell people to do that aren't doing the way we are go so ask for olive oil and just take the crust off if you haven't gotten to the point where we are but i eat before i go out so that i'm not hungry uh even if i just have a juice or an energy soup or something like that and then i'm and by the way i carry stuff with me everywhere you think i eat tons of food because i'm always carrying food around with me. yeah yeah, I, same thing. I always look ahead, like if we have family parties, because I don't eat out unless I come to Karen's, or um, if it's like a birthday party or family party, I look ahead of time. Or sometimes my family accommodates me now, you know, they, yeah. which is great. They're always like, "We well, got you a raw plate." Your mom is phenomenal. Your yeah. mom is. Re you've really gotten your mother involved in all yeah, this. Yeah, it's 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 great. So um, my family's very accommodating, and then at family parties, I like preparing something raw too, whether it's like a dessert or bringing some fruit and letting people try. Okay, Making but, it a social thing. But here's the question, I think, because you're a good-looking young guy and you're dating, what do you do on dates? I'm sure the girls want to know. They, they do whatever. No, I'm kidding. Ooh. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> Actually, whenever I have, like, most people, I know this is going to sound wrong, but most girls that I interact with feel comfortable with me because they know I'm not, like, creepy and weird and whatever. And I normally have them over and I'll... Make them juice, make them a smoothie, make them ice cream, make them all this stuff, and talk with them instead of going to a restaurant. I don't know. I, In the old days, it was come see my etchings. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but but no, I mean, I'm harmless, I'm you know. And it. It, if there's chemistry, if there's whatever, if not, kick so, rocks. No, I'm kidding. So I'm you don't kidding. actually go out on dates. Sometimes, I mean, it depends. No, I don't because it's hard to find vegan women, and I'm not going to sell short. I'm not going to go on a date with a girl that's not vegan, and it's no discrimination. It's just. Veganism is something that I stand for and believe in, and it's, you know... So you're not going to sit and watch somebody eat a steak? <laughs> no, and, and me eating a salad. Like, how does that make me look? I'm eating a, how's your steak? Like, <laughs> come on now. That's terrible. So anyway, yeah, that's how I do it. But I'm with, sure your fans like that and need to know that answer. Yeah, yeah, totally. Probiotics. Yeah, fermented but, foods. Yeah, yeah. Once again, it's my fermented foods and the rejuvenate that I make. But I also sell a very good probiotic, and I think everybody should be. Our soil is nothing like what it used to be. I mean, mm. our gut bacteria is so compromised. Everybody. I mean, when I worked at the functional medicine office, we got gut tests for like almost every patient. Everybody had we what we everybody. call overgrowth of weeds in your garden. You're supposed oh, to. Oh, that's it. I like that. Yeah. Kind of sounds a little. Um, yeah. You got to get rid of all those weeds to grow that good gut bacteria. Yeah, so that's a good way to put it. So everybody should be doing some kind of for, for a minute. And you know, when you look at these different, um, what do you call it? Uh, the documentaries on people living to a hundred and something years old and even though they're eating small amounts of meat they're all doing some kind of kefir or sauerkraut or some kimchi. kind of kimchi some kind of fermented food which is adding to the longevity yeah um what do you do when you go on vacation i take food with me oh wait but, probiotics real oh, quick my oh, yes. basically my only probiotic is uh kombucha and I make my own or I get it from Arise, which I love Arise because we went to the plant and saw how they make it. There's a YouTube video up on both of our channels. You can check it out. Um, but yeah, that's my probiotic. I, I used to take a probiotic, but I, I feel now with the way I eat and stuff, I'm pretty comfortable with where I'm at. Okay. Mm -hmm. So next, what we're talking about is what we do when we go on vacation. Yes, I always have like a little bag of food with me. I actually will make my drinks if I'm going someplace kind of like out of the way and freeze them because I know that I can I can always ask for a refrigerator and I'll defrost a drink. But now, just to, you can get wheatgrass in Alaska. I mean, everywhere you go. This is when I used to travel years ago. I always tra had I to think, be difficult then. Yeah, and I think I still travel with food because I'm always afraid I'm going to run out. I carry more food than I would eat normally at home, but I do always carry stuff with me. Um, and what you can do is you can put it in the body of the plane, which is very cold and you don't have to worry mm. about it. And then when you get where you're going, but you can get raw food and stuff any place in the world now. It's, it's not an issue. When I was in Lithuania, there were actually two phenomenal raw food restaurants there. Mm. So we're in London, I mean, wherever you go, you can find food now. Yeah. I mean, just from traveling over the last few years, even airports have vegan food. I mean, it'll mm -hmm. say vegan. They have a whole vegan section. Right. Uh, what I do, what I, I used to complicate things because when I would go places, I always wanted to find a gourmet restaurant, gourmet raw, and just <laughs> splurge. But I, I, I've simplified. I went to Vegas this year, last year. I went to Whole Foods, just stocked up, stocked the hotel with fruit, 
and you know they have at Whole Foods raw stuff and, and, and we're raw so I mean that's like an extreme case I mean there's not many raw foodies out there but I no, but no wait wait there is a fabulous raw food restaurant there and they will deliver on the strip my imagination yeah uh, no did they go out of business go. Uh, they, they went out of business oh. there's a place only called imagination because there. my friends had a place there, 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 there and they would actually deliver to me on the strip when I was staying at um, Wynn or whatever they would bring food to the hotel for me yeah but there's a Whole Foods right off the strip and you, you can get anything there I mean they have right. their salad bar I mean it, I think we just complicate too much when we go on vacation like you said we can there's juice bars everywhere now I mean you can find food anywhere last question how has this lifestyle changed your life well I um, mean you I, I well I still have men chasing after me at 71. Young men. <laughs> young I've guys. seen young men in her restaurants. I'm talking like in their 30s. Yeah, I, but yeah, that's not the high. It's just nice to know that I'm not invisible. So many women, when they get to my age, become invisible. You know, you don't even think about it. All of a sudden, nobody's paying attention to you anymore. And it's not just in a sexual way. You just become invisible. You just kind of put over there with your pants with the elastic on them and your flats or gym shoes. And let's and face it been... though, a lot of women in their 70s are, you know, medication and oh, just yeah. and so, almost on their way out. I mean, well, it's, it's, it's unfortunate, but it's the reality of it. So I feel vibrant at 71. Still I Still taking like dance an, classes. I still take uh, ballet classes with young girls. I'm not as good as them, but I'm in the class and I'm accepted in the so class. That's important. I don't feel I don't feel like I'm missing out on anything. I'm still excited about starting new and doing new stuff. I'm not Constantly I'm not bringing my life in. I'm still expanding it. Yeah. That's the thing. When people get my age, they start to when you stop growing, you die. Right? Yeah, when you retire too. <laughs> so, but it's like I feel like I still have expansion left in me. So much. And I have friends that aren't even that close to me anymore for that very reason. They're Im they're imploding, they're coming in and I'm still going out. So that's a big part of it. I think not knowing what illness is, I am slightly clumsy and I've you know, fallen here and there just because I'm always racing around to do something. Always. But um, to be honest with you, other than my looks changing, but, but not so drastically that you can't well, recognize me. You built an me. empire, basically, too. And, you know, when you look at people my age and you look at their younger pictures, you wonder, is this the same person? Well, I don't look yeah. like I did at, at that age, but you know it's me still. I'm still in here. I haven't disappeared. That's my new thing. I haven't disappeared. Yeah, yeah you look great. I mean, being around her is so inspiring. I mean, she... she since I've known her, I mean, the way she takes care of herself, and honestly, she looks half her age, and her energy, everything. I mean, it's... The, the well, it's catching up here, that visually, for me, because I'm a vain woman. Yeah. Oh, vanity has a lot to do with it, ladies. Totally, yes, that's why. is great, yeah. but I'm telling you, because every what it line does, on your face is showing what's going on in here internally. Your adrenals, your spleen, pancreas, it's all showing. That's why I won't get any work done. I'm terrified, first of all, but, but I don't want to hide my road map. Like, I know I'm under a lot of stress. Map, I like that. So my adrenals are a little more than they normally would be. You know, this mm -hmm. isn't because I'm 71, it's because I'm under there's so much stress right you know my spleen pancreas well I've been and you brought me all that sugar today you know um, the <laughs> dragon fruit yellow and yellow. so you know it's way too much for me the older you get the less sweet stuff you should be doing but you know it's I'm telling you guys try it even just for a week you know when they used to interview me years ago before it got so popular they said well how do you know what you're talking about I go try it for a week and tell me I'm wrong so try it for a week and let us know your experience yeah. if you've never done anything like this before yeah. now how has it changed you it's changed my life in every aspect physically mentally emotionally spiritually like I was saying uh, like I, I walked out of a job of 12 years because I just said this isn't serving me no more and now I can serve others you know you know, That's so beautiful. Um, it's just uh, it's and it, young man, how many at 35 do you come to that realization of your spirituality and what we're really put here for the purpose of life? Right. That's why the world is round, so we keep running into each other to help each other. Where well, you're on that journey, I mean, I I'm so impressed with what you've done. Yeah, I appreciate that. But I am. Yeah, I mean, it's just it's everything. It's everything to me, and it fills you with compassion. And like I said, you're just on a different. Wait, energy wait. frequency yeah you know and, and you only want to vibe with those people on that energy and that and the people that are on a lower vibration you you you, you sense them. it yeah yeah and you do attract them because they see your light mm -hmm. you know and that's and darkness always wants to overtake light but light wins out in the end yeah 
So anyway, that thank was great. you so much for joining yeah, us. Yeah, I hope we helped you guys out with answering these questions. I mean, these are a lot of common questions we always get, and this is from our point of view. And yes, yeah. Make yourself your own laboratory. Figure it out for yourself. We're totally. just giving you thoughts and suggestions. Don't listen to anybody. You seek out the information. You know. We're in the information age. Google, YouTube, books. If you want it, you can do it. And please join Karen and Johnny doing it raw anytime you feel the need. Yeah. Wait. I don't even know what that <laughs> means. Like, what does that mean? <laughs> We're gonna keep making these videos. Yes, we, yes, we, yeah. I, we, we enjoy doing this. We're gonna do recipes. We're gonna yeah. touch on certain subjects. So we and hope you guys let enjoy. Let us these. know what they want to. Right. I mean, I don't mind if you want yeah. to send me. Tell us in the comments. Tell us yeah. what you want to see. What Tell you... us if you enjoyed this. Give us a like yeah. if you did. And uh, yeah, yeah, we'll just keep it and coming. Keep spreading We're gonna expand. Word. We're gonna expand. We're gonna keep coming with you guys. And remember, if you don't take care of your body, the most magnificent machine you'll ever be given. Where are you gonna live? Bye. See you next time.